Yes, you are mighty. You are loving. You are holy. Yes, you are the God that, you're the Father that gave us a mother. You're the one who brought us here. Amen. And it's so good to be here this morning on Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to all the, the mothers in the house. Happy Mother's Day to all of us who had a mother. Amen. I believe that's everybody in the house. Everybody in the house has or had a mother. And so I'd like to ask you if you would turn once again with me to that scripture that was read earlier into your hearing, Psalm 139. Please stand if you can as we honor the pastor of the church, Reverend Reggie Longfire, our first lady, Audrey, who's an awesome mother. Our first, our mother of a church, Mother Lynch, who is an awesome woman, amen? If you don't know Mother Lynch, get to know her. If you want to get close to Jesus, get to know her or get to know Miss A. That's about as close as you can get. And in Psalm 139, David is talking about how God, how awesome God is and how God is everywhere. There's nowhere that God isn't. God was even there in our mother's womb. And in verse 13 through 16, it says this, For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful, and I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth, your eyes saw my unformed body, and all the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. Amen. And you may be seated, and I'd like to use for a topic this morning. Thank God for my mother. Thank God for my mother. Can y'all say that with me? Thank God for my mother. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal, most wise God, we just thank you for another Mother's Day when we are here together to remember our mothers and those of us who are mothers to celebrate being mothers, those of us who are grandmothers, those of us who have a surrogate mother or are a surrogate mother. We thank you for motherhood. We thank you for Mother Earth. We thank you for all the creation of God. And I just ask you right now that you would just be with me Help me now to bring this message to these, your people. Help me to bring it to them in a way, God, that's meaningful, that touches them in a new place. God, that helps them in a way that they were not imagining. Give us a revelation. God, do something new today. Help us to have an aha moment. Help us to go deeper in the Spirit, God to be closer to you, to see you in a new way through our mother and so that you might help us to see ourselves in a new way through our mother. We thank you right now for this time, oh God, and ask you to have your way. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. And uh, Minister Michelle was right that Mother's Day is kind of bittersweet. It just depends, you know, on, on where you are with your mother. You know, if your mother is still here, then praise God for that. You know, if, you, if you're as old as we are and you still have your mother here on the earth, that's a wonderful thing. And I hope that no one would let Mother's Day go by without calling their mother. Is she still here? No matter what's gone down, no matter how, how things have happened, you know, no day is promised to anyone. And so if your mother is still here, be sure and reach out to her today and tell her that you love her. Tell her that you thank her. Tell her that you're thinking about her on Mother's Day. And that's, you know, that can be bittersweet depending on what your relationship is with your mother right now. We, we, in, the, in the, you know, theory of Mother's Day, everyone has a great relationship with their mother. Everyone's close to their mother. Everybody can celebrate Mother's Day with their mother. But in reality, that's not always the case. Sometimes things have happened and we're not quite as close to our mothers as we used to be or as we want to be. But on Mother's Day, there's no reason in the world why we can't give them a call and just say thank you and I love you. Amen? Amen. Don't waste another day if that be you. And if your mother is gone and I'm one of those, my mother is no longer here. 
And that's a hard thing. I remember when Mother Lynch lost her mother. How many years ago was that, Sister Lee? Five? 2009. In 2009, Mother Lynch lost her mother. And that was a very, very painful thing for Mother Lynch. And, you know, someone who is the elder of the church and the mother of the church, to, to see her grieving for her own mother, I'll never forget that. How What a big impact that made on her life that her mother was still her mother. She could be the mother of the church. She could be the, the mother of 11 children. She could be the grandmother of how many? How many grandchildren do you think your mama had? 80. 80. She had 11 children, so she has 80 grandchildren. And no telling how many great grands, but just the same, when her mother passed, she grieved because that was her mother. We all only have one mother. And so when that one mother is no longer here, we grieve for her. We wish that we had another day with her. There's a book, and I wanted to just put this out there for anybody here who has lost their mom and she's not with us anymore on the earth. There's a book called One More Day. And it's, I can't remember the name of the author, but that's the name of the book, One More Day. And the idea is, what if you had one more day with someone who's not here anymore? What would you do with that day? And the man in the story picked his mother. He said, if I get one more day with anyone, I want to have one more day with my mom. And the story is the day that he had with her. And what happened, I don't want to tell you what the story is because that will spoil it. I hate it when someone tells me about a movie. That's a great movie. And they tell me the whole thing, including the end. Amen? Now what do I want to see the movie for? You already told me everything. That's called being a movie spoiler. So I'm not going to be a book spoiler. I'm not going to tell you how the book ends. But I'll just tell you, when I read it, I was so moved by what happened with this man who had his mother with him for one more day and what he learned and what happened between them. And at the end of the book, I was on a plane. I don't remember where I was flying, but I was reading the end of the book where the, what his mother had to give him in that one day that he got back, I started to cry. And I cried. I couldn't stop myself from crying. And I know the people sitting around me wondering, what is wrong with that woman? I couldn't help myself. I cried and I cried. It moved me so much and I never forgot it. And so it, it's about forgiveness. I'll say that. So if anybody here, his mother has gone and you wish, God, I wish I just had one more day with her. If she could just be here and see me now. If I could have my mother for one more day and if I could use the wisdom I've gained in my life to be with her one more time, read that book for one more day. And it will bless your heart. It will, it will help you with your grief. But today on Mother's Day, I started praying and I started asking God, you know, what, what's the message for today, God, on Mother's Day? What is it? And the thing that came to me is that everybody has a mother. Everybody. Nobody came here on the earth except that you had a mother. Amen? Everybody had a mother or has a mother. And that's an awesome thing that, that God chose women to create life through us. And as a woman, you know, I want to say that's kind of a, it's a mixed blessing because, you know, it carries a lot of weight. Women, we wind up being mothers all by ourselves lots of times. And mothers carry the load of raising children. Not that the fathers don't do anything because fathers are so important. Men, we need you. We need you. And Nathan, I love you for how you care about your baby. You know, how you want to be that good father. And I know a lot of men who desire to be that good father. So don't misunderstand me. I'm not saying that fathers aren't important. I'm just saying that for whatever reason, God chose women. We're the ones that he said, I'm going to partner with them to create life. That is amazing. And that is something that I'll never take for granted, that God chose women to be partners, to be co-creators with Him, to reveal Himself to us through women. God reveals who He is through the process of having a baby. You wonder, like, what's God like? God is amazing. God is miraculous. God is like, wow, I can't understand. I can't even fathom what the Creator is like. But you look at the process of birth, and you get a little idea of what God is like. And this scripture says 
that you created me in my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place. We were all made in the secret place, my brothers and sisters. We all came from our mother's womb. That is amazing. If you just even ponder it for a second, and I know that most of the people I'm talking to this morning are men. Maybe, well, I don't know, maybe we're like 50-50. But it is amazing. And I think back to the days before technology. You know, most of the, of the history of humanity, we didn't have technology. We couldn't see what was going on in there. You know, we didn't have anything to do with it, and we couldn't see it either. And so for a woman, I am sure that the process of that baby inside, you can't tell what's going on. Really, you have nothing to do with it. We're not doing anything. I'm not doing anything. But somehow, I have life inside of me, and God chose a special woman to be your mother. No matter what the relationship has been like, is like now, there was one woman that was chosen to bring you here to the earth. How that happens, I don't really understand it, but I do know that it's true that there was a woman that was chosen to bring you here, Sister Marlene. That woman was your mother. You know, we all came through a different woman, and it's not like our fathers didn't have anything to do with it. They made a contribution. You know, it's like, what do they say? that When you have breakfast, you have bacon and eggs. They say, that's a good breakfast. Well, the chicken made a contribution. The chicken gave up an egg, but the pig made a total sacrifice for you to get that bacon. That was the whole thing. The pig gave it all up. And so I have to say, as far as childbirth goes, the man, we thank y'all for your contribution. We couldn't do it without you. But the woman makes the total sacrifice. We give up our whole body. Amen? The whole, we give up there. We give up nine months of our life and then usually 20 years after that. But we make the total sacrifice to bring you here. The man, the daddy makes the contribution, but the mama makes the total sacrifice. And, you know, you don't know what's going on in there. And for all these years until recently, women really couldn't tell. Nobody could tell what was going on in there. But what we know is that every bit of it is absolutely amazing. And it says that you knit me together in my mother's womb. My frame was not hidden for you. You saw my unformed body. This tells me that we were with God before we came to be in our mother's womb. That's what it says. Read it again. We were with God before we were in our, we came alive as human beings in our mother's womb. We are spiritual creations, first and foremost, eternal and with God and from God. We were with God before. We were in our mother's womb. And somehow, in the mind of God, in the timing of God, however that works out, there was a woman who was ordained to bring us here to the earth as a human being. Created in God's image, there was a woman that was chosen. And when that woman was chosen, somehow, that you will be the mother of Michelle. You will be the mother of Kenneth. You will be the mother of Brent and of George. And of that brother back there, I don't know you, Miss May. You'll be the mother of Claudette. You'll be the mother of Tucker and of Calvin and of Nathan and of Retha. You'll be the mother of Lee. And you'll be the mother of Karen. How that works, you'll be the mother of Susan. Her name was Joy. And somehow she was ordained to be my mother. So first and foremost, I thank God that he chose a woman to be my mother. I thank God that he chose Joy Parish to be my mother. And I hope that you will thank God. Take a minute today and say, God, I thank you that you chose my mother to bring me to the earth, to be your partner, to co-create with you so that I might be here. And what we know is what I just said is that we were with God before we were in our mother's womb. And we are so unique and special. And if you don't believe it, I want to tell you again, you're unique and special, there's no one in all creation just like you. There is no one in all creation that's just like you. When you were with God before you were in your mother's womb, there was no one in the mind of God 
just like you. You're special to God. You're unique. You are extraordinary in the mind of God. But then he picks a woman and he partners with her to help create in his image a human being to live on the earth and in the creation that he made for us. And how do we know that we're so special, that we're so unique, that we're extraordinary? There's no one else like us. Just take your hand. Take your hand. Hold your hand up like this. Hold it up. Now look at it. And you know nobody has the fingerprints that you have. Or the palm print. A palm print is individual. A palm print, there's no one, not another one just like yours. How can this be with billions of people? How can we have totally unique and special, extraordinary fingerprints and palm prints? God partnered with our mother and knit us together in her womb somehow to be absolutely unique, absolutely individual, extraordinary with a set of fingerprints that no one else has. No one. Your iris of your eye. Did you know the iris of your eye is even more individual than your fingerprints? That our irises of our eyes speak to our extraordinary nature and how unique and how different we all are more than our fingerprints. And that's why today some identification uh, clearance procedures want to look at your eye rather than your fingerprint. Because fingerprints can be erased and somebody else's fingerprints can be put on. I mean, it's a trick. It's a trick. It's not of God, but it's a trick. But nobody can change the iris of their eye. The iris is all yours. There's no one else like you. God did that when he knit you together in your mother's womb, in the secret place, in the dark, in the waters of your mother. It's, it's like the earth or the life. Genesis says life came out of the waters. Didn't it say that? And we are born in the water too. We're made in the waters deep in the earth of our mother. And the first thing we look at, now we know, back in the day, we didn't know anything. Like, well, it just happened somehow. There's just somebody growing inside of me, and I don't know how it's going on. Now we know that we look like a tadpole. The first thing, if you can tell about a human being, if you, when you can actually tell, it's, it is something more than just a little clump of cells, it looks like a tadpole. Now, that's an interesting idea. I don't know what to go with that, really, but we do. We start out like little tadpoles, little tiny tadpoles. But then somehow we branch off. We don't become frogs. We become human beings. But we were meant to be in the water. We were meant to be raised in the water. We're breathing in the water. That's pretty amazing. Our baby's in there. And I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Our DNA, if you could even just think for a second about your DNA, how individual that is. Every cell in your body, which are billions and billions and billions of cells, have your DNA that tell the cells what to do. The DNA, somehow God, this is God, picked your mother to put your DNA in her, right? And that DNA tells itself what to do, to grow and to form a head and to form a torso and to form little legs and feet and fingers and toes and a brain and organs. It's amazing. It's absolutely amazing and remarkable. we got to love our mothers for being the wood, being the earth that birthed us, being the ocean that birthed us, the waters in the womb. And we can't see it like they see it, like the baby sees it. But today we can see a lot more than we used to. The people today are so into the ultrasound pictures. You know, you can get in there and you can see where the baby is and you can tell the sex of the baby. You can tell a lot about the baby. Even there are 3D ultrasound uh, places where you can go and get a portrait of your baby before it's born. Now, that's mind-blowing. If my mother was alive today and I said, well, I'm sorry you missed that, Mom. Back now, now we can get a picture of our baby before it's even born. You had to wait until the baby was here to see it. But today, you can see your baby on the inside. You can, you can be more aware of what's going on with your baby than ever. But I remember when I was pregnant, that kind of stuff wasn't available. And so what I had, I had books. And I know a lot of women, your mother, trust me, was wondering what was going on on the inside. That what was God doing? 
We are partners with God. We are co-creators with God. The, the, God chose me to have Rachel and James. I had two children. But God chose my mother Joy to have me. Somehow Joy was chosen to have me. And no matter what your mother's life was like, no matter what your relationship has been like, you've got to appreciate that she was the woman that God chose to bring you here. For whatever reason, she was the woman who God chose to bring you here. And I know I was obsessed with the books. I would get the books, the pregnancy books, and I would just had to look at all the pictures. Every day. Had to look at the pictures every day. What's what's week one look like? What's week two look like? What's week three look like? What's you know, Michelle, you're talking, you're just so fascinated. What's week ten look like? What's week twelve look like? And I was always fascinated. What's going on with my baby? Because I can't tell. But I know that from the book it's telling me what's happening. We're just obsessed with it. You know, just gotta know every little thing that's going on with our baby. You know, your mother, when you were in her womb, can you imagine? How that felt to her the first time she felt you kick. The first time your mother felt you in her womb. Men, I'm telling you, there's nothing like it. When you feel something inside of you that's alive, that is crazy. That is, that is, is fearfully and wonderfully made. All of a sudden, here comes, what was that? Something just kicked me. I kicked my mother. I'm sure I kicked her. And I kicked her again, you know, and we start pushing her in the back and pushing her this way. It's not comfortable sometimes. So we got to thank God for our mother that she endured nine months. Somebody say nine months. Nine months. Nine months. Nine months our mother was working with God to bring us here. Nine months, day after day, and God is, is strengthening her and helping her and encouraging her. And God is doing something with us while we're growing in our mother's womb. Every one of us have had that experience. That's the one thing I know is that every one of us grew inside of our mother's womb. Every one of us started out like a little tadpole. And every one of us grew and changed and morphed and organs and brains and fingers and toes. All that going on in the secret place, in the dark, in the waters, just like God ordained it for us. How, how is that? I don't know, but that's the way it is. And I have to thank God for the woman that brought me here. And I hope you will too, no matter what, that you would thank God for the woman that God chose to bring you here. Because trust me, well, if you're a woman and you're having a baby when your mama was having you, Sister Marlene, and it gets closer and closer to that time, women are some of the bravest people in all the earth. Because we're the ones that have the babies. Amen? You men, if y'all had to go through what we went through to bring you here, I don't know if there'd be that many people on the earth. Men would say, no thanks, I don't think I won't do that. Uh -uh. I don't like the end. The beginning of the story, the beginning of the experience might be okay, but I don't know if I want to go through the end. Because that is, uh, uh, try to pull a watermelon out of your nose, <laughs> and you'll know what it's like. Like, how am I going to get that thing out of me? Oh, Lord, only God could help us in that moment, the moment of childbirth. The woman, I mean, you are, wow, your mama went through something to get you out. I'm just going to tell you right now. Whether she got you out naturally or they had to do a C-section, your mama did, went through something to bring you here. Man, women go through this every day all over the world, and I really feel for the women in the world right now that don't have health care, that don't have proper support when they're having a baby. I, they, a lot of them die. They bleed to death or other things happen, the baby dies, you know, there, it's a very tenuous time, it's a hard time for a woman when it's time for the baby to come, so it's, it's just joyous, my baby's coming, your mama was celebrating when you were coming, oh my God, I'm going to get to see my baby now, because I know that when you were in your mother's womb, the bigger you got, and the closer it got to when you were coming out, and it was going to be time for your birthday, and she was waiting, and she was getting bigger, and she was getting heavy, she couldn't sleep good at night. And she's trying to get comfortable. It's getting bigger and lower and bigger and lower. I thank God for my mother. I thank God that God chose her to bring me here with my unique spiritual creature, creation that I am. So I might live upon the earth as God ordained for me 
and do the things that he had in his will for me. But it took my mother to bring me here. It took my mother to bear the pain of childbirth. You know, we know ahead of time it's going to hurt. And we do it anyway. And so we just can't help it. There's nothing we can do. And even if the doctor says, don't push. Stop. It's too, you say, I can't help it. You know? So you just can't help it. I can't help it. This baby wants to come out. And so this whole process is ordained by God. It's something that God is in control of. It's not something we created. It's something that we do with God. And so our mother with God brought us here. Our mother with God had us. But then when we were born, and finally when you get to hold your baby in your arms, all that time, that nine months, and I know Carl said, my mama loves me and she doesn't hear from me for a month. She's going to start getting upset. She's going to start wondering what's going on with me. As a grown man as he is, his mama still loves him. And we love our children when they're a baby. We love our little baby the first time that they, the, when, the, when they put the baby on the mama's tummy and you see your baby for the first time, that's who is inside of me. That's what I've been going through for the past nine months. This is what God did with me. It is the most amazing moment ever. And so I just encourage you today to remember that your mama, there was a moment when your mother saw you for the first time and I guarantee it, that's God put it in us. When your mother saw you for the first time, she smiled. And she said, oh, my child, my baby, you're finally here. I, this, is, this is what I've been waiting for for nine months. There was a moment, and that's where I'm trying to get this morning. I'm trying to get into that moment where my mama saw me for the first time in her arms, that precious creation that God did with her. Crea Not that the man, the daddy didn't make a contribution, and if you were there in the delivery room, good for you. Stand by your woman. If you are able to do that, some men can't. They like, can't do that. That's too much. That's okay, because God is with her. But if you can be there, you're very, very important. But the fact that you came from your mother's womb, that he knit you together, that he made you completely unique. There is no one like you, Tucker, not anybody like you. No one. Calvin, no one. Reason, no one. And when your mama holds you in her arms for the first time, the joy, the love, your capacity of love is expanded. You helped your mother to love more than before you were born. Your mother loved like she loved before you were born, but when you were born, her ability to love was expanded. I can't explain it, but I know it to be true. Your mother's love was expanded when she saw you for the first time, and she suffered to bring you here. It wasn't easy. Nine months carrying you, nine months letting something go on inside of you that you don't understand. It can be scary sometimes. It can be scary when you're pregnant. You don't know what's going on in there. You're scared for your baby. You're scared for yourself. Your mama suffered to bring you here. Your mama faced her anxieties and her fears to bring you here, to work with God, to bring you here. And then once you were here, your mother had to go through some things with you. Amen? Anybody, anybody here had a mama that had to go through some stuff with you? My mother did. My mother went through some stuff with me as I grew up and went through my journey of life and I had my, you know, stumbles and falling down and getting back up again and trying again and making mistakes and starting over. And I had a period of about five years from 17 to 22 that I was really, I was out there. I was totally out there. And I now that I look back on it, I think, oh my God, how did my mother take it? How does she stand the worry? I mean, your daughter was just in Nepal where they had the earthquake. And I saw what that did to Minister Michelle when that earthquake happened over there in Nepal, knowing that Catherine, her daughter, was there. Knowing that thousands of people were dead. Knowing that people were sleeping outside because they were scared of the buildings. Knowing that she might not be safe. Something could have happened. How, I, I've never seen you like that. That's, I know, that's what a mother does. Like, oh my God, my child, my child. You know, your mother probably cried tears over you. Your mother worried about you. Your mother had you on her mind all the time. That's the way moms are. Even if moms are going up and down themselves, we never forget our children. We love our children. And even if we're not doing well, moms are just little children that grew up. And anybody's mom who didn't do exactly what you feel like she should have done, 
she's on a journey too. You know, moms did the best they could with what they had to work with and who they were at the time. So we've got to forgive our moms if they didn't do everything just right. But our moms went through things with us. And I know, Claudette, you gave me one of the best things to think about that anybody's ever given me because I've been through a lot with my children. I've been through a lot. I have. With my son, and I'm still going through a lot. And Claudette said, you know, my children have caused me more pain as adults than they ever did as children. And I thought, that is so true. That is so true. We, you know, ideally think, well, the children are going to grow up and everything's going to be okay and they're going to go and get their life on and I'm going to go ahead and have my time. But it doesn't work like that sometimes, does it, Sister Lee? Our children, when they hurt, we hurt. When they stumble and fall, we worry. You know, when they're not okay, we're anxious. You know, we can't help it. It's not easy. And mom, I don't see very many moms just say, I don't care. I don't know if I've met any mom who said, I don't care about what's going on with my kid. I don't think we're capable of doing that. I don't care what. I can't do that. But so, Sister Claudette, thank you for that because that helped me to own the fact that motherhood is forever. <laughs> you know, you are a mother as long as you're living. And your mother loved you and went through stuff with you. But in the end, that is how God ordained it. That's what a mother is like God. God suffers with us. God's heart is broken when we're not doing well. God is, I'm sure, grieving for us when we lose things that we didn't need to lose, when we, we go places we shouldn't have gone and say things we shouldn't have said and get into messes, the same thing, making the same mistake time after time. I'm sure in the heart of God there's grief. And in a mother, love, there is grief also. Mothers are very much like God in that way. And so... Like I said earlier, I don't know, I, I, I tried to, I've tried to teach my son unconditional love and unconditional forgiveness from me as a mother. That I will always love him no matter what. I will forgive him again and again. Somebody asked Jesus, how many times am I supposed to forgive somebody? He said, 70 times 7, which means as many times as it takes. You just keep forgiving. And he, I had to help him understand that a mother's love is different. Then somebody else's love. He said, God, you know, the way you love me, I mean, you forgive me again and again, and you, you always love me no matter what, and other people are not like that. And I said, I know. That's special for mothers. Your mother's love is like God's love. It's unconditional. Because she was with you when you were formed in a secret place. She was with you when God was knitting you together in her body, getting bigger and bigger, and you were becoming more and more real. There's something about that nine months. The woman that God chose, the one that partnered with God to bring you here, that was how it was supposed to be. I don't understand that, but I believe that God chose the woman who brought me here. I believe that God chose the woman that brought you here. The circumstances... We don't understand them all the time, but that's the way God intended it for it to be. That was going to be your mother. And so today, can you appreciate the one woman that God chose to bring you here? Will you honor her memory or her life? The one woman, there's only one. You can't have two moms that knit you together in the secret place. You can only have one mother who co-created with God. There's only one woman, and she's extraordinary and exceptionally special. And no matter what it is that we went through with her, no matter how things are today, she is extraordinary because she's the one that God picked to bring us here. Why did God pick her? I don't know. But I think now I say, God, I thank you for picking Joy Parish. What was the, what's your mother's name? Okay, she's still with us. God picked her, Minister Mathis, to bring you here. That is your one mother. Other people can be like a mother, but that's the mother that co-created with God. And, and Sister Marlene, your mom has passed, is that right? And what's her name? Eleanor. Eleanor. God picked Eleanor to bring you here. It's your one mother, the, the one that partnered and co-created with God. Sister May, what was the name of your mother? Miss Willamette. Miss Willamette. God chose Miss Willamay to bring little Miss May 
to the earth. The one woman that would do it with God. What was your mother's name, Tucker? Nancy Tucker. Nancy Tucker. Nancy was the special woman that God chose to create you in the way that you are today. What about you, George? What's your mother's name? Mother was Estelle. Estelle. How special was she that God chose her? He chose her to create you in her, in the inmost being, in the secret place. That's where God made you. What was your mother's name? John. John. Is she still here? She is. She's special. She's extraordinary. She's the only one out of all the women. God said, I want John to bring Brent to the earth. What's your mother's name? Darlene. Darlene. He said, I got a special job for you, darling. <laughs> There's a man named Kenny that needs to come into the earth. And he, she created you with him in the secret place, Kenny. The one person, the one woman that God could work with to bring you here. And we want to honor them today. What was your mother's name, my brother? Rosie. Rosie. And what's your name? Antoine. 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 Rosie was a beautiful beautiful spiritual creature above all women that needed to bring you here to the earth. God chose her, that one mother, to bring you here. What about you, Carl? What's your mama's name? Leona. Leona. You know she was special because, because God chose her. He knit you together in her womb. Deacon Ed, what's your mother's name? Mary. 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 Mary, I need your help because I need to bring Ed to the world. Let me knit him together in your womb. Claudia, what was your mother's name? Roxy. Roxy? Roxy. We thank God for Roxy today because he chose Roxy's womb, the waters of her womb, to knit Sister Claudia together in the secret place. What was your mother's name? Maggie. Maggie. Is she still here? She's passed. And so when Maggie began to grow, she said, what are you doing, God? You're going to give me cow and special woman. And what about you, Nathan? What's your mother's name? Catherine. Catherine. And I know she was a beautiful woman because you're a beautiful man. And he chose a very special woman to partner with her to push you together just like that. With special fingerprints. Nobody got the Irish you got. Nobody got the DNA you got. You got it through, what was your name? Catherine. Through Catherine. You got it through Catherine. Read the what was your mother's name? Genevieve. Genevieve? Genevieve. What a beautiful name. And he said, Genevieve, I will co-create with you, and I will grow a woman named Retha in your belly, and we will bring her to the earth to live all the days of death for her life. So let us remember our mothers today for the nine months that she carried us, for the wonder that God did in her body. If you could imagine how she felt when she felt you kicked for the first time, when she felt you moved, when she saw your little head poking out, your feet poking out, your mother for nine months, waited and waited to meet you. And then you were there and she said, my God, oh, my baby is fearfully and wonderfully made. I thank you, God, for what you've done in my body with you. And so today, let us stand. That is the message. Let us thank God for our mother, the one that God chose. And ponder on that and meditate on that and think about that. God chose one special woman to bring me here. And I thank God today for Joy Parrish. And I thank God for what she went through to bring me here. I thank God for all that she went through while she was here. And, and she never stopped believing in me. She never stopped loving me. And today, if I just had one more day, if I could just live out that book, if I could have that one more day, what would I do with my mother? So if your mother's still here, do all you can to be as close as you can to her and to be reconciled, to be reunited, whatever it takes. Don't let a day pass without trying to make it right with your mom. And if she's gone, remember this, that, the, that the, the end of that story was that mothers forgive. And they do. Mothers forgive like God forgives.